James Ernest of the Gruen Truth Radio Network here with the owner, uh, Ken Reamer of ICE International Championship Events. So tell us a little bit about ICE. What's, uh, what's the structure like? The structure is about, you know, number one, it's on ICE. You know, everybody's seen racing on, at asphalt, on the dirt, but, you know, how often do you bring the best of the best together? do it on the ice. Um, it's all about, um, you know, short track, ice racing, zero to 60 in three seconds, and bringing the best of the best together uh, during the winter when there's nothing else going on. So we've got X game qualifiers, we've got top AMA district riders, AFT riders, which uh, it just makes the competition intense and, and definitely worth watching. Excellent. And the great thing about this sport is it's not just like a new thing. It's been, what, 42 years now? Yeah, we've been around since 1976. So the Densford, Jerry and Brent Densford started it back in 1976. And then my wife and I took it over after I'd been riding the Pro Series for seven years um, last year. Excellent. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, that was one of the things when I found out uh, I wasn't getting to speak to the boss. Nah, just kidding. Uh <laughs> At least I know how it is in my family. I know my other half's in charge. Um, you got a, uh, what is it, a 10-event schedule? Eight events this year. Eight events this year. And then at the yep. end, is there uh, an overall champion, or is it more on event basis that the championships are awarded? Overall championship. You know, so these guys are definitely fighting for the points all season. Oh, okay. So the big event at the end is going to be the one in uh, Hobart. In uh, yes. Ohio, wow, that's awesome! Yep. So that's the uh, that's your old Super Bowl. Yep. Nice. So with yep. this, uh, you mentioned uh, the previous two owners. Uh, I understand they still play an important role in the events. They're definitely still there for us for advice and stuff. You yeah. know, Brett and Gary, anything we need, you know, they're there to answer any questions and stuff. Absolutely. Excellent. And. Um, Prior to this, you had done snowmobiles? Yep. Prior to this, I'd raced uh, snowcross for eight years. Um, uh, I, I was on the sport, sport program through Polaris. And then, uh, a long story short, in, in 07, I broke my leg, I broke my arm, um, I broke my collarbone. Um, it affected my other work. And so I decided to get out of racing for a couple of years which brought me in the flat track. Yeah, you mentioned the other work. Uh, the way I understand you uh, are a stuntman for TV, movies, that kind of thing? Yes, sir. Excellent. Well, can you tell us uh, about some of the uh, the work we'd recognize? Yeah, absolutely. You know, Prison Break was a big show. I doubled one with Miller and Matt. Um, early edition was a TV show I started on, and then I got a new movie, Story of Echoes, done with Kevin Bacon. Um, I did The Batman, uh, The Dark Knight, Batman Begins, um, Superman, Man of Steel, um, several in between there, and then currently working on Chicago Fire, and um, the new movie Rampage with Dwayne Jackson, The Rock, which came, which we filmed this last summer, and it's going to be coming out in theaters pretty soon. Oh my, yeah, so you're shoot working with some uh, big time people, big fan of uh, Prison Break, what was one of the more uh, elaborate stunts on that? On Prison Break? Yeah. Prison Break, probably one of them was, you know, it wasn't one of the biggest stunts I've ever did, but when they throw, so I'm walking down the gang walk, but I'm like, I'm like two and a half stories high, mm -hmm. and two guys come out of their cells and grab me and throw me off the railing. So it's not one of them deals where you look over the edge and you spot your landing. Mm -hmm. you got to trust that these two guys are going to throw you, and you're going to, you end up on a four by eight piece of um of mat about three feet tall so you trust that them guys are going to throw you in a way in such that that when you come over that railing and you come down that you're going to land um and hit that four eight mat oh wow so um uh, yeah because that was one of the prisoners that they were upset with or something and then they they tossed him. wow and yeah so it was wentworth miller the main actor that had all the tattoos that's who i was doubling and um they decided to give him a hard time and throw him over the edge. It was 
it was kind of in the, in the beginning of the first season. Yeah, yeah, that was an awesome scene. And then you, uh, you'd also done the, the Batman movies? Yep. Oh, wow. Uh, yep. Did you get to drive the Batmobile? I did not get to drive the Batmobile, you know. I, I drove, I drove some cop cars, um, some cabs, and we were doing some chasing stuff. Um, were you in the truck? Several trip? different. What's that? The, the truck, how they uh, flipped the uh, the one truck, the armored truck or whatever it was? Well, when they flipped, when they flipped the semi, yeah, yeah. when they flipped the semi end over end, I was in the stunt car just behind the semi. Oh, wow. When we were doing the case, coming up on the semi, and that was an intense scene. You know, if that semi would have went side to side, it would have ended up in a building. Um, yeah. To see the choreography and, and the building of that, that thing oh, yeah. was pretty awesome to yeah. be a part of it. How to organize that and all, wow. Yeah. So, uh, what's the structure like point-wise in, uh, in your events? How it works or where we're at today? Uh, how it works, like point-wise. What, how it works. What do they have to win uh, to get more points? And Yeah, so basically what it is is, you know, there, there's a possibility to win um, 60 points a, uh, every show, every race. But if you get passing points, so let's say, so there's a maximum you, you can win, you can get... 10 points per heat, and then 40 points in the final. So if you win, you win your heat, you get 10. You win another heat, you get 10. Win the final, you get 40 points. Now, even if you get a 1 and a 2, and let's say you're on the fourth spot in the front row, you get passing points. So if you went from fourth to first, you get eight passing points. So essentially, you could get you could get up to 62 to 64 points um, possible to still to still win that round. Oh, wow. Um, most of the time, the guys that are right in front, you know, are first and first or first and second. And, and so it's happened a couple times where a couple of the guys have gotten up to 62 points. Um, and then basically how it happens is, so like tonight, if we have 16 quads, um, after the first round of heats, or after the second, you know, both heats, we add up them points. The top four go to the front row of the main. The next eight go to the LCQ. The top four from the LCQ go to the back row of the main, and unfortunately, everybody else is going home. Oh, wow. Because because this is indoor ice racing, we can only put four guys on the front row. Yeah. So when there's only 16 quads, it kind of tightens up a field. It's like, so points-wise, it's like the same as a 40-bike a, a main at a motocross event, right? Mm-hmm. So it sounds like, like you were saying before, the competition level is just extremely high to get those uh, prime spots. It is. You know, the competition level, you look at on the front row, um, or, or up there in points right now, Jake Matai, two-time world champion. Um, he's leading the points right now. you got Austin Greenland, another top American flat track rider. Jeremy Orr, a national rider. Um, and the list goes on. The competition is so tight this year. And the same thing in the quad division. You got Daryl Rath, a man that is highly respected in the ATV industry that's won basically everything on in ATV, um, traveling and doing the whole tour this year. Um, you got Tyler Allen that was extremely good in the Midwest dirt bike series this year. Um, and you got Dusty Crouch, four-time national champion. Um, and the list goes on there. The competition this year and guys that have been with us for a long time, it's, it's bigger than it's ever been. When, so it's really exciting to have the top guys from all over the United States together to do this series. So with the uh, the shows, do you get to see all the different uh, styles of racing? The uh, the manufacturer, the unlimited, the big dog, the amateur quad, and the extreme go kart. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. Oh. And and the one thing we've added this year is the motorcycle limbo. You know, you've hardly ever seen the motorcycle limbo on dirt. We're doing the motorcycle limbo on ice. These guys are getting that bar as low as 27 inches off the ground and making it and getting their bike back up. Oh it's been it's been incredible to watch. And the way I understand it, on top of all this awesome racing, there's uh, part of your you know your other job, uh, stunt work involved. Yes. So, and, uh, cause well, of course one of the themes of it is, uh, fire and ice. Obviously we don't want to give too much away cause you know, they want to, you know, come out and be surprised and see 
you know, everything that's involved. But wow, I mean, that's got to uh, be an interest, uh, a difficult balance to be able to have the fire there and it not mess with the ice, or is because the ice so cold it still works out. Absolutely, you know, it's awesome. I don't want to give it all away, but you know, you do get to see me on fire. I'm not going to say how extravagant. Everybody kind of needs to go online and see. Um, but I, I do have a lot of fire off of me. Um, jumping through the ring of fire quad jump and doing it on the ice where your traction and your consistency and your takeoffs are always different, which which makes it a little more difficult. Okay, so you know, it sounds and, like you're one, and you're one of those uh, owners that, you know, just uh, have everybody else do the work for you and you kind of sit back and, oh, wait, you're on fire? <laughs> yeah. Wow, talk about dedication. Oh, my gosh, that is amazing. <laughs> Yeah, so that basically started, you know, um, the old owner said, Ken, you know, what can we do to spice up the show? And as a joke, almost, I said, you know, let's jump through fire. Yeah. And he's like, okay. So I kind of had to come through with what I wanted to do, right? Yeah. And so then once we started jumping through the ring of fire, and the ring of fire is essentially a propane torch. It's not like burlap around a ring with yeah. a little bit of fire. It's, it's a propane torch blowing into me. And then we have a wall of fire behind it. And then Randy Bass from um, High Tech Effects, Special Effects, we had a propane bomb in there and, and all kinds of fire. And then we said, well, let's take it to the next level. Let's start you on fire again. And with my background of doing stunts and stuff, um, people can go online and see it. I get lit on fire from my waist up, fully engulfed. And I do a lap in the dark around the rink to start wow. off the fire on ice tour. Yeah. So, right? If we're going to be fire on ice, we've got to have fire on ice. Exactly. That's amazing. And then, of course, the best part is, even though, you know, it's very intense things, and obviously you probably tell them a bunch of times, do not try this at home, it's still a nice family event. It is. It is. You know, one thing we'd love is, is at the end of the event where the kids can pick out their favorite riders, come and get their autographs, follow them on our Facebook page, and really encourage the next generation of racing. Nice. So very, uh, very interactive, very fan friendly, very, because, you know, when you go to a lot of events, you're sitting way up high, you know, shoot to get anywhere near the athletes would, you know, you probably end up going to jail because they're so just non-fan friendly. But yeah, that's amazing that they, uh, that you incorporate that. Absolutely. And during the race, we like to throw a lot of t-shirts out. We do a thing where we do turkey bowling, where we bring some bring some people out of the audience to come down with their favorite driver and do a little turkey bowling. We really um, like to be as crowd um, participation as much as possible. Definitely. That's, you know, that's an amazing thing. And like you said, you got the eight big events coming up this season. Uh, about how far along in the schedule are you currently? We're around six right now in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. Okay. So, um, you know, around six, usually you start seeing a big gap in the points, but these guys are really fighting for positions yet, so it's really going to be exciting coming into the last two rounds after this weekend. Excellent. So, uh, any advice on someone who's interested in trying to join your organization? Do they send you a video? Do they do a tryout? How do they, uh, you know, learn about maybe participating next season? You know, basically, if someone's interested, we encourage them, number one, come and check it out. We do have an amateur class. Come and try out the amateur class. Now, let's say you're a pro dirt rider. You know, you've been doing flat track for a while. You have a lot of flat track experience. Come check it out. You know, what I'll do is I usually ask for a resume with a little bit of experience because these are the top guys um, that you're going to be racing against. And uh, we get you a set of tires, ice tires set up with a silver rocket coal cutter screw and uh, get you out there and race. Nice. So you've got the uh, Cedar Rapids, Iowa this weekend, and then on the 10th, um, did, have they determined where the, the big event on the 10th is going to be? There isn't going to be one the 10th. What we got is the 16th, we've got Sioux City coming up on the schedule, mm -hmm. and then the end of March we got, um, and then we got Hobart Arena. Oh, nice. Yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I'm excited to hear about that one because I'm just right down the road in Kentucky. So yeah, I would love to come up, take some photos, to be able to put on our website to uh, spread the good word about your organization and see that big championship event. Is it is it like a trophy? Is it more like a medal? What do they you know What do they win? 
So every so every weekend, the ionic the ionic trophy is it's a marble based big aluminum stud is the trophy that if you got one of them, you know you've achieved something in the indoor world. You get one of them every weekend if you win a race. That's what the first place trophy is. Mm-hmm. Um, then for the championship, it's a gold stud. You win the championship, you get the you get the gold stud and at the end of the year money and points. Nice. I was going to say, no offense to uh, some of the other sports, you know, uh, which obviously will uh, be obvious when I say their uh, prizes, but, uh, you know, a jukebox, a guitar, some of the goofy things that, uh, okay, I'll just go ahead and say it. NASCAR gives out, I mean, a gold spike. Wow, that's, now that's a trophy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's amazing. You know, it's one of, the, it's one of those trophies where um, when you walk into a room, it's like, I know exactly where you at and what you did because when you see that trophy, there's only one place you can get it, and that's Ice Speedway. Yeah, that is amazing. And then you all were based out of Wisconsin. Yep. So the Densford were they're based out of Myrtle Beach. Now we're based out of Burlington, Wisconsin. Excellent. So any uh, major things that uh, that I haven't covered that uh, the fans should know about your event? Obviously, you know, the website, the uh, social media links, that kind of thing. Yeah, you know, the biggest thing, please follow us on Facebook, you know, Instagram. You'll see all the updates. You'll see what's happening week to week. Sometimes we're able to do live um, and, and see even some of the live footage. Um, we just had Discovery Channel Canada came down and did a full episode on myself and ice and, and, and everything about it. So we're going to be, that's going to be out on the, on the website and the Facebook page and, and everybody that looks for that. It's kind of an exciting little episode. It shows the racing. It shows the pyro. It shows me doing the body burn, the ring of fire jump, and it talks about what ice is all about and, and what we've done to um, take over things the last couple of years. That's amazing, and that's great that, you know, shoot with the original owners and yourselves, how it's a family business, and just the dedication and the passion for the uh, sport of ice racing. Absolutely, you know, we just want to, we want to keep it, um, you know, growing, um, make more and more people aware of, of what it is, because when we travel around the country, there's only one spot, you know, when we go to East City, that you can see this all year long. Um, you can't, there's not another tour like it. Yeah, we need to get something like this in uh, BBT Arena or U.S. Bank Arena down here in Cincinnati next season. Because, yeah, I mean, this is just like a really fun and amazing uh, family experience. Um, Absolutely. Where, where can they go to get the tickets? Uh, what are the rates? That kind of thing. You know, that varies from arena to arena. You know, usually kids' tickets are 7 to $12. You know, when adults usually start around 19 that usually it varies just a little bit. Um, as far as the schedule, uh, you know, please go on our Facebook page, World Championship Ice Racing, or our wife, or our website at, I'm sorry, our website at um, icespeedway.com, and it'll give all the updated info on where we're at that week, what arena we're at, and where you go for tickets. Yeah, I mean, that's amazing. Uh, the Like you were saying, the prices are very reasonable, you know, for a family event, for fans to come out and see some uh, high-end quality sports. Because you go to the NFL, I think the cheap tickets are 50 bucks. You go to baseball, right. they're 20 or 30 You know, basketball, right. good lordy, is ridiculous. Yeah. And that near as crowd interactive as they like to be. Exactly. So, yeah, and it sounds like you were saying the different types of vehicles, so there's something for everybody. There's the extreme yeah. stunt show that you're going to be doing, the fire on ice that, oh my gosh, right there is worth the price of admission. Yeah, that, that'll be amazing. So uh, we wish you the best of luck in Iowa this weekend. And uh, Thank you very much. Yeah, definitely. And then uh, hopefully I uh, can meet up with you all in Ohio and uh, see that championship crowned. And uh, definitely would love to have some of your writers on the show in the future. You know, if there's uh, you know going to be a big event coming up. You know, next year or before the season kicks off, you know, have you all back? Absolutely. And talk it up. Absolutely. We should plan something at the beginning of the year with the last world champions and, and going into next year. We've got a lot of new pro riders off the dirt tour that's going to be joining us next year. It's going to be another extreme, um, extremely exciting year. That is awesome.